You're not gonna get help. You had plenty of chances to get help. I Every am, single time you got exposed you guys, for it. You guys are you, gonna be you guys are gonna witness that though. Look, look, you've been exposed for this six different times. Are you serious? I don't know if I, I don't know. What, what do you mean? Come on, me? man. We're we're trying to get you help, dude. Because you're not gonna get help. Hold on. Sorry, as far as the whole remorse shit, um and making an apology video, first off, I'm not apologizing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I've already, I've already apologized. Welcome back to another episode of Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen tonight with a very special collaboration again with Wes Most. In December 2022, former YouTuber and current TikTok star EDP445 made headlines for an alleged inappropriate conversation with a minor. The story gained some national attention, but as some outlets inaccurately reported, EDP was outed for a second time. But to anyone who was paying attention from the beginning, that number was way, way off. This was not his second time getting caught. This was about his 10 to 11th. I have a laundry list of videos showing all of it. And the part that gets me is each of those videos were getting thousands of views, right? So these, some of them were making a front page of YouTube. And yet after getting caught his fifth and sixth and seventh, he just did not stop. He didn't stop. He got caught eight times and then tried to meet up with the decoy after that. There's no stopping this man. Before we explore these latest accusations, let's take a quick look at how we got here in the first place. Joining me now, the two content creators who exposed EDP 445 in the very beginning and actually took a lot of heat for it. Cold Raven and you. Master at Work, also known as, as Tyson are joining me now. Guys, thanks very much for being on the show. Uh, yeah, no it. doubt, no doubt. Hey, so first, Cold Raven and, and uh, Tyson, jump in when you want to. How did you guys get to know each other in the content creator world? It was April 2021 when EDP made a short drive that would change his life forever. At the time, 30-year-old EDP was on top of the world with over 2 million subscribers, an adoring fan base, and money rolling in through cameos and other appearances. What you probably didn't know is that the fateful meeting between EDP and those predator catchers was set up by this guy. Yo, what's poppin' it's your Puerto Rican Prince, Cold Raven King of the Ravens. Right here, he made a response video, which is a very terrible one again. Um, he just again- Cold Raven, a small YouTuber with around a thousand subscribers at the time he took on a channel, 2,000 times larger than his. In, in Cold Raven, when did you get the sense that EDP wasn't just acting here, that maybe he was a bad guy, maybe he was a predator, in fact? Um, pretty much, I'm not gonna lie, uh, when the allegations, when I first spoke to allegations, I saw them on Instagram, and within two days of them initially being broken, um, this is the absolute beginning, but almost before the seeds even planted, I immediately knew him as 120% guilty. But he wasn't completely alone. You are watching a master at work. YouTuber master at work had deeper roots with EDP going back to 2012. And he joined Cold Raven on spreading the word about Morley. And how did he strike you at first, uh, Tyson? He was, he was, like I said, he was a trash talker, but his, his stuff was a little bit more vulgar, something that I've never seen on the internet before. He didn't have any shame in, in, in the stuff that he was saying. Um, I never had any like thing that he was like into, you know, little girls or uh, minors or anything that never struck me as 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 him at first. But the more the stuff that he started saying, the vulgar, the vulgarness, um, I started realizing that maybe this dude is actually really sick and maybe he's just not just playing a character. The battle between EDP and Cold Raven went on for months and the more evidence Cold Raven uncovered, the more Bryant would gaslight his audience. How much of this was bravado, guys, you know, and, and, and drama to amp up clicks and views, and how much of it was real? He, he seems 
or the way he speaks is like, okay, he's he's this big and bad guy. You know what, ma'am? Punk ass motherfuckers like Cold Raven, they all come and go. But in actuality, he's he's not, and he used his fan base or his following to threaten um, Cold Raven, and he he did the same to me after he got caught the first, um the second time, which is in in 4K. So I knew he's he's really not that he's not about that life. So he doesn't scare me whatsoever. And again, this all happens because of you. You do this to yourself. No one else does this to you. You're here because of you. Nobody else. You put yourself in this situation. You made your bet. Lie in it. You guys took a lot of heat for taking on EDP 445. I mean, this guy has millions of subscribers and views. And, and he had a lot of fans in spite of his potentially predatory behavior, offensive behavior online. Um, what was it like for you to know that you were right in exposing this guy, but to be taking flag for it? At one point, his only response to a damning Cold Raven expose was to eat chicken wings while cocking a gun. Um, I mean, we're talking about hundreds to sometimes even over a thousand comments a day um, from one social media to people finding out my other ones by, you know, searching through my videos. And out of nowhere, people have not just my YouTube, they have my Instagram, they got my Facebook, uh, which I didn't even use anymore because it was out of date. Then they're trying to get in contact with my girlfriend at the time. Um, that led up to me being doxxed and people finding my address. Uh, some people were sending pictures of my own home to me with threats of trying to kill me. And uh, some people had said that they were going to hire hitmen to have me killed all because I had exposed him for, you know, what he's done. He knew what he was doing. And rather than address this growing mountain of evidence, this was the only response he could muster. Listen, mother, all right. If you honestly believe that I would throw my fucking life away, right, for a Do you think that EDP 445 was behind these threats, or do you think it was just his fans mostly? I believe that people took into accord of what they wanted to do, and he egged it on, and he, he just pushed it and kept telling them to go after it. And there's live streams that he had in which he was telling people to flag my channel. After months of back and forth and continued escalating harassment coming towards Cold Raven, he took things into his own hands when he reached out to Alex, a.k.a. Chet Goldstein, the personality behind Predator Poachers. When he got caught in that sting, that bust did it vindicate what you guys had been saying all along i'll be 100 percent honest i remember when um so the guy who called him his name is uh alex which sure, um, sure. i've heard that you had an interview with them my contact with him was on and off because i let him know about edp because i've seen his videos before um and i knew you know if anybody could pretty much get the job done i did feel like it would be him because i've seen that he's done it plenty of times sure. and he was the only one that was willing to contact me say within a couple of weeks he sent me a screenshot of um of the video of him catching edp now what i thought happened at that moment was that um he got in contact with EDP to kind of make a troll video to troll me because I was in such disbelief that this guy would actually meet up with the minor. I was in such disbelief. And then I remember watching it premiere in my living room with my brother. And the amount of vindication I felt was kind of like a thousand pounds of weight got taken off my shoulder. And now I can finally relax out of, you know, a year and a half of constant anxiety of all these death threats and all these people threatening my girl you know threatening everything threatening the safety of my family literally only because i outed a man for trying to get sexual with little girls the fallout for edp was immediate and he would receive the kind of nationwide press that he would have killed for under normal circumstances for anyone who believes that there is no such thing as bad publicity i would like to present exhibit a the aftermath of that April 2021 meeting with Ghost and Alex. Are you really doing this? Yes. Okay, it's... All right, that clip you just watched is from a YouTube video posted by CC Unit. The whole video lasts nearly 55 minutes in which two YouTubers set up an attempt to catch a... 
In the days and weeks after its exposure, EDP would be deplatformed on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, Friendster, Classmates.com, and probably Yahoo Messenger. He tried various comebacks, even promoting a website he promised would be launching after accepting that no platform wanted anything to do with him. Around the same time, I was one of the only media members to actually have contact with Moreland during this time, as I offered him a chance to have a seat with Chris Hansen to tell the story. He agreed, but only if we would pay him $19,000. We passed. After the news broke, things were quiet at first, but then EDP started hinting at a comeback. My n- Chet Goldstein, or should I call you Alex Rosen? Whatever the f- your name is, my n- whatever the f- you prefer to be called. Now, when we had last seen Bryant Moreland, he was meekly admitting to his perversions while also begging not to be exposed. He was contrite. He acted remorseful. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah. Is my life over? That's up to you. It's up to you to determine. Honestly, this is up to you. He was disgusted with himself. I don't even know what to say, man. Yeah, dude, shame on you. Shame on me, man. I'm not, I'm, I'm speechless, bro. Yeah. I'm speechless, dude. Hey, bro, you want to call the cops? Please don't, man. Why not? How about you call the cops? You call the cops. You hey, need to get help. Call. We're honestly... No, 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 hold on. Hold call on. the cops. Please, please, please. please, please don't call Just call the cops. Okay. Come on, man, please. No, 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 but by the time EDP would release these videos announcing his comeback plans in May of 2021, that remorse was completely gone. Your credibility is f***ed, bro. See, the difference between me and you is, my the f***ing eat that pussy movement, my we riding f***ing packs, bro. This ain't the f***ing end. This is just the goddamn beginning, Do you feel me? And we will continue to straight whip our ass out and feel me we take care of our own you know what i mean his videos were full of their previous bluster and bravado once again threatening his detractors namely cold raven ghost alex and master at work fucking piece of shit, loser and you ain't about shit. you and that shit, rap face snag it to buster tyson my this shit's sad as it's pathetic as and all you bum ass his first video back was on facebook and he mentioned me by my name and then he made another video on me saying that he was going to send me cease and desist letters which never came so like i said and then he then he actually doxed me by putting my house out there where i used to live on his ig so he tried to use his audience to try to get at me but i never stopped he never attempted an apology never admitted what he did so um just want to let you guys know man edp445.com um is coming soon been been about like a week maybe two weeks from now the website he hyped as an alternative to youtube was dead on arrival cameo and twitter were done with him and every platform he tried to stream from was unwilling to host the controversial figure shockingly though he still had supporters People who were all too willing to make excuses for Bryant, despite evidence and his own admissions. The most prevalent excuse is that this is all just part of his edgy humor. The conversation with minors was just EDP being a troll. Would that excuse fly in a court of law? Not according to Reyes Muhammad of RM Warner Law. Reis Mohammed is a lawyer who specializes in internet law and defamation as well as slander. Reis, thanks again for joining us. Always a pleasure. So we were talking about this case of EDP 445, Bryant Moreland. This is a guy who was insanely popular with a YouTube channel, several other social media platforms. And word got out that he may have been contacting inappropriately underage girls. You know, you've been immersed in this world from a legal standpoint for many years now and, and have a certain expertise here. But take your lawyer hat off for a second and just, I mean, some would still argue, though, that 
he's just out there being obnoxious, outrageous. That's part of his brand, part of what he does. Um, and it's all part of the outrageous attention seeking that many people engage in when it comes to YouTube and other platforms. Do you buy that or is it pretty clear that he's crossed the line again? Uh, I, I'm not buying it if that's what he's trying to sell. That's for sure. I mean, um, yeah, there are things that people do for clout and to get popular and go viral. I mean, if his if his argument is I'm making sexual advances to underage girls or boys for attention, I think he's got a world of problems. Um, and so horrible argument, definitely not buying it. Does it ever stun you at the number of people making a living on social media platforms like YouTube acting this way? It's, it's shocking, but not shocking because YouTube's number one game here is to compete with other attention grabbing platforms like TikTok, like Instagram and be the place to go. And as a result, pay content creators so that they can keep eyeballs. Right. And so it's not surprising that, um, shocking, gross, obnoxious, put whatever word you want to describe these things. Um, the type of content that people use to generate monetization and make a living. I mean, it's, 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 it's shocking in the sense that you can't believe that today people get away with this kind of stuff, but it's not shocking when you actually look at the players involved and look at the bottom line, which is revenue, advertising, and eyeballs. In just a matter of months, EDP went from a beloved creator to a social pariah. The issues continued to spread into his personal life with evictions, job losses. Shit. And he's all like, hey man, did anybody tell you that you look like that guy EDP? I'm looking like he gets out and shit. And then like a little, um, he uh, actually reports me to Lyft and gets my Lyft account suspended. A legal name change and the threat of cameras constantly in his face, a direct result of the actions he took in April of 2021. Like the people that spread misinformation about you, that would pretty much be defamation. Right. Have you ever like thought about like suits for defamation and shit? Yeah, I looked into a lot of lawyers actually um, about that shit. Um, a lot of lawyers said, you know, law firms, they said that I have a, um, I'm a pretty good case, but um, no. EDP would threaten several people with defamation and slander lawsuits to make them pay for the sad state he finds his life in. But does he have a case? The predator poaching group who exposed EDP 445 the first time uh, has been controversial itself because it doesn't work with law enforcement in most cases and most of its cases are just spectacles of embarrassment and shame without any prosecution resulting and and the fact is most law enforcement agencies don't like to work with these vigilante groups because they make for difficult prosecutions does that change the landscape here at all because of the way this particular group operates I think, you know, whenever I hear sort of these vigilante groups that are trying to out people, I mean, it's it's a slippery slope because it can be dangerous. On one hand, there's a public service aspect of it where it's, you know, we're going to set this person up, we're going to crack them down. You know, everybody wants to be Chris Hansen, right? Uh, on, on the other hand, um, sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they're planting evidence that can't be used. And I could see why prosecutors may question wanting to use any quote unquote evidence that comes out of those things. So I, I think it does change the ball game a little bit. But in terms of defamation or slander, you don't see EDP 445 having a case here based upon what has become public. You know, it's a great question, Chris. And the answer to that is probably not. As a matter of fact, it would be extremely ironic for EDP 445 to take the position that he's uh, not guilty of these things when there is evidence to the contrary. And of course, it just depends on what's being said, right? We get granular into the, the gist. Sometimes we get granular into exactly what's said, but overall in defamation, we look at the gist, the thrust of what's being said. So for example, if somebody has uh, EDP 445 on video or in text trying to have sexual relationship with a 13 year old, it's hard to refute that by simply saying, well, I wasn't prosecuted. 
Um, and it, the specific statement at issue is, well, you're, a, you know, you're a criminal and you were prosecuted for it. Well, technically false. It's still, it's still criminal conduct. In the almost two years since being exposed, the news about EDP never fully went away. While Cold Raven moved on to focusing on the kind of content he always wanted to make, Masterwork 2 returned to his regular brand of videos. But every now and then, he would release updates about EDP, becoming one of, if not the most trusted sources for accurate information in the continuing saga of the artist formerly known as Bryant Moreland. Bryant would eventually find a home to continue his brand of off-color, profanity-laced content. And unsurprisingly, it would be on TikTok. The same man who had been caught trying to have inappropriate relationships with several minors and even admitted to this. So again, what's a ballpark number of how many minors you've talked to? Like, at, you know, obviously it's been five. So after five, what would you say the number is? Six. Six? Six, Six minors. Six. Name them. Had no issues, concerns, or hesitations with joining a site that is largely populated by young teens. Given what we know about EDP 445, should he be allowed to have a TikTok page where he's exposed to 700,000 viewers, subscribers, some of whom are undoubtedly children, minors? Yeah, I, I, I think TikTok, if it hasn't already become aware of um, what he has gotten in trouble for and what people have exposed, certainly need to consider it. And I would say... This falls into the category of a no-brainer. I mean, I know professionals that have lost TikTok accounts for quote-unquote violating terms relating to advertising, right? So this is a much more egregious case, and this is a much more significant cause to say, sorry, you don't get an account. And at the end of the day, the platform calls the shots. During an interview in October 2022, when EDP could have addressed and apologized for his actions, after months of reflection and life-altering decisions. One of my uh, mods asked, uh, if you got in trouble with the feds after that, that whole incident, like the whole incident Did that I, happened. Yeah. No. No, not at all? No, okay. nothing ever happened. Okay. I tell people, well, you know, I was never questioned, never arrested, never detained, never asked to come in. As a matter of fact, uh -huh. if I have my lawyer at the time draw up uh, charges against him, I could because first off, they were impersonating Police officers, you can't do that. Yeah, personating true. officers, entrapment, you know, pain and suffering, loss, loss, it's just so much fucking shit, dude. Um, but it's like me personally, I decided to take the high road and not go down to Texas and kill those because honestly like you know there's been you know a few people uh my close friends they're all like they don't understand. I've how seen like a video. i seen like a video. He instead made more threats, acted like a thug, and said his only regret was not bringing a firearm to what he thought would be the home of a willing minor. There was another good question. What would you do if you saw them again in person? Kill them. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so say if, if, if I set up a boxing match between y'all two, would you be down to do it? First off, I, um, sure, I would do it until I get to the boxing match and just take off the gloves and kill them. <laughs> Uh, what was your initial reaction when that whole situation happened? In the moment? Yeah, in the like moment, pretty much. There, yeah. I should have brought my Glock and shot <laughs> <laughs> My entire reaction was, damn, I should have took the Glock off the counter, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, he said that his only regret was that he didn't bring a gun to shoot the guys who caught him. Who says that? What kind of a person says that? I won't lie to you. I've never heard that statement. <laughs> and as I hear it now, um, it sounds so, I, I guess, just just idiotic. It's just he, hilarious. He did, I remember him remember. saying that in a live. He said it where he was interviewed by another, I don't know, another uh, amateur interviewer that kind of catered to him. This should have been a chance to ask EDP the hard-hitting questions and dig to the truth while challenging him on his lies and ever-changing story. I have been telling me, and I kind of touched on this before, you know, it's like, you know damn well going through all, all that I have to be a good person, dude. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I could have easily, with all the guns that I, that I have, 
you know what? Let me get an AR. I mean, you know, let me drive. I have to Texas. Let me go hawk this ass, man. Let me just fuck him up. That's what you're about to do. Like, not, not that's what you're about to do, but after, you know, you drove away and shit, you were pretty tight, like mad. No, I could have done it. Instead, it was simply giving a platform to a predator to spread more lies and propaganda. Ew. Nah, but so pretty much you're saying that these guys that set you up, they were jealous. Yeah. 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 You know, and as far as the whole remorse and jealous, um, the so uh, sorry, as far as the whole remorse shit, um, and making an apology video, first off, I'm not apologizing. For Mm -hmm. Secondly, I've already I've already apologized and talked to my close friends and family, real friends, about everything, and they've already forgiven me and shit like that. They're all like, we don't even see what the fucking issue is, nigga. We know that you're not like that, so why even, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. In December 2022, EDP would once again make headlines, and not the kind you want, when he was caught texting another underage teen. Hello. Elizabeth, are you there? Hey, yeah. what's up? Okay, so first of all, you obviously just turned 18, right? I, I verify that, right? So you, yeah, if you want to go ahead and just say what you need to say, and I'll just ask any follow-up questions on like how you met EDP and did you know, like, did you look up the, the, the Sting Operation video and so on, so you can uh, go ahead and speak to the audience. Okay, so basically I was added to a group chat with him. Yeah. So when you guys first started talking here, when you guys first, okay, so I'm going to, I got the text messages on my thing. I loaded them. So I guess it looks like here, hold on. It says, uh, I'll call you back on the phone. I think I'm going to off before I go to bed tonight. Yeah. Make he sure I have a, gonna come. and who was it who was credited with the news that shocked very few. <laughs> It was Master at Work who broke the story after he was approached by the teenager who had been in contact with EDP. We got him evicted from the Spur Apartments in Henderson, Nevada, and we're back. I said I wasn't going to come back unless he got exposed again. <laughs> and lo and behold, he got caught doing it again to a high schooler who, by the way, if you go to my channel and watch the last live stream, she's still in high school. And he started talking to her when she was 17. I tried to tell you, a zebra doesn't change its stripes. Oh, I guess EDP's off the hook, right? Because she deleted her Instagram because you guys were bullying her and harassing her. The same thing you did when Cold Raven exposed him the first time. Clout chasing, am I right? Or what about the second time when he got caught in 4K? I guess they were just clout chasing, right? Well, what about the 13 year old that contacted him June of this year and EDP was so paranoid he thought well it must be another decoy clout chasing right shout out to no jumper shout out to world star hip-hop shout out to Moist critical for giving me my due finally giving me my flowers if you haven't seen this video on master at works channel I can only tell you that Bryant has learned nothing in the time since his life was flipped upside down. The link to the full interview is in the description. So he's, he's, I'm telling you, this is exactly what it sounds like to be groomed. I was just really trolling him. Like in the group chat, like when we made that group chat, we were literally just trolling him. And like, mm -hmm. he just took it too damn far. Like he started like personally, like DMing me and like, Saying, he fell for it again fly. so on here it says don't let anyone ever tell you you aren't beautiful not even me you deserve the best i didn't trust me if i was in louisiana it'd be a beat down your door smothering you with flowers and hugs you just better prepare yourself because i was showering you on the entire world that's the corniest ever <laughs> that video you posted in a group it's unlikely that edp will face legal consequences for his actions but there are many who believe it wouldn't make a difference. In his own words, EDP is extremely sick and his chance of recovery is low. But he's still out there. What's it gonna take? Is it gonna take him being arrested? Is it going to take just everybody to stop paying attention to him as a bully and a predator? What's it gonna take to stop this guy? Well, well I will say this. 
he might not have much longer anyway, because I don't know if you know this, Chris, but he has been diagnosed with kidney failure, a stage five. Yes, mother I have kidney failure. Cool. So um he even he even said it himself on one of his um ig lives or his tiktok lives and i think he posted a video yesterday on his tiktok that he's done with tiktok because people keep mass reporting him and that he's going to go to another website um rumble which is for a lot of content creators that you know that are anti-semitic and you know a lot of content creators that want to say what they want to say but get yeah. banned on youtube and social media platforms like you know tiktok but he lives in a he wants to live in an echo chamber he he wants to live because if you look at his tiktok he has over seven hundred thousand followers on tiktok there's a he's a, there's a lot of impressionable young kids that don't think what he did is wrong or think it's dark humor so at the end of the day his following is is minors so that's the only people that watch and troll him he has posted about his health issues and dialysis but some have wondered aloud if this isn't just a troll or perhaps a way to garner sympathy in lieu of an actual admission of guilt. EDP has made his life an inescapable prison, both with his larger-than-life personality and unique body size. Let's face it, he won't exactly fly under the radar in most circumstances, but it doesn't change the fact that he still remains dangerous. What makes us think that you're, you're not going to do this again? This right here? This right here? This Right so, here. So when you go back to your car and you go home, you're gonna just hop back on and keep doing this. Cause I'm. Sh do you have? Are you talking to other other miners on your phone? He has been caught multiple times and still continues to talk to teenagers, even with the knowledge that contact with minors online for sexual purposes is a felony. Like I said, he has an echo chamber and an audience that that is filled with a bunch of. Um, impressionable minors that that will follow him no matter what he does there's no really stopping that and everybody everybody that that's kind of like edp um will, will find their own little niche their audience no matter what they believe in it so there's really no stopping that but like i said karma um will always come to collect no matter no matter if you think you get away with it or not it always comes and in his case um a lot of stuff has like i said he's not making the money that he used to make he um he's having a lot of health issues um his family has abandoned him so like i said we might not he might not be behind bars but at the end of the day he is feeling what what he is paying for what he did in in, in, his, in his own in its own way how can TikTok? willingly allow someone with the myriad of accusations and damning video out there to thrive on their platform while others at least for optic purposes made the decision to protect minors from bryant moreland at the time of this recording edp has exploded to over 830,000 tiktok followers and as of january 2nd 2023 he is selling personalized shout outs through his own website he is advertising on the app. In theory, he can now move the conversation with minors from the confines of his TikTok inbox to his very own platform. Anyone who doesn't see just how problematic this is either isn't paying attention or is willfully ignoring the danger. Of course, TikTok is not the only app that has come under fire for turning a blind eye towards the exploitation of children of all types. From family channels to people like Austin Jones, Mini Lad, EDP himself, and many, many more. So once again, we are forced to ask a question that we have been asking for years. When will YouTube take action so that the many warnings and red flags sent their way to report on predatory behavior are not ignored until it's too late? What's it going to take for YouTube to do more to police its own platform? You, you know, I think the more that this sort of thing comes out and sees the light of day, the more pressure it puts on platforms like YouTube to know what's going on on their platform and to stand against it, to ban these accounts um, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Otherwise, until that point, it's all talk, you know, saying that your, your platform has guidelines. Well, who's policing those guidelines? What do you do when things get reported? 
Uh, is it a robot? Is it an AI tool that's just looking for basic infringement or is it something deeper than that? So I, I think platforms have a duty. It's, it's, not just, uh, it, it's not just talk anymore. It's something they need to actually put action into. The story of EDP has been a roller coaster since the early days when Cold Raven bravely took on a behemoth of a channel with a massive fan base. He didn't have to do it. It didn't even benefit his channel. If anything, his channel suffered in the long run, which led him to eventually abandon it and start over from scratch. Any perceived gains of clout were far outweighed by the amount of hate and vitriol he had to endure just to out a predator. But he never stopped. Guys, if you had it to do all over again, would you do the same thing? 100%. I always knew this dude was bad. Um, even when Cold Raven first caught him, I told Cold Raven that just be prepared because he's going to gaslight his audience to try to get you to stop. And I'm glad that Cold Raven didn't stop because what it led to was him getting caught red handed in 4K, which led to him losing the YouTube platform, losing all his money and stuff like that. So, no, I don't regret any. I don't regret anything that's ha that's happened. David slayed Goliath in April 2021, and he didn't do it with a sling, a rock and a one in a million shot. Rather, he used receipts, interviews, an unabashed determination to do the right thing in the face of adversity, and of course, a confrontation in a Bakersfield parking lot with a man who wants you to believe he bypassed the many award-winning bakeries to snatch a sweet treat from an underage child. Because his story can change. His lies will most likely continue, but this, this is forever. But you said you want to throw her in a dungeon. You said you want to climb through her window. You said you want to punish her. You send graphic photos. You asked for graphic photos and here you are walking to the apartment. So to properly sum up the story of EDP, in the months and years after he was exposed, everything has changed. As long as he's breathing, he's hunting. That's just what it is. We can clearly see as long as he's out there, he's just, he's just never gonna stop. While nothing has changed. At the end of the day, he's not making as uh, the money that he used to make. He can no longer really be out in public like that because like I said, people has found his job where he lived. He's got evicted from his last apartment because nobody wants him near him. So he's he might have not be in jail, but he's paying for it on a level that other people are not really seeing. What does this say, guys? We'll see you next time on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I want to thank Wes most as always. I'll be watching and listening.